Great Team are standouts among the Spartan 2s and have been since the early days of the program. Jai006 was born on the colony of Bouge in 2511. In September of 2517, he was kidnapped by agents of the Office of Naval Intelligence. He and 74 other candidates were brought to reach to be inducted into the Spartan 2 program. When he was told he would be conscripted, he tried to leave, but was stopped. One night not long after arriving, Jai tried to escape, during which he met another candidate, Adriana111. Over the next five months, the two became close friends as they attempted escape after escape, adopting different and more effective strategies each time. After suffering broken ankles, lost eyes, fingers, and toes, trainers resorted to shooting the pair with stun rounds from a pelican. Eventually, Jai was sent to meet with Dr. Catherine Halsey, saying he wanted to go home. Halsey said she would allow it provided he underwent selective neural paralysis or memory erasure. She informed him that if he tried to escape again, he would be shot with a neural paralysis dart, waking up in a city with no memory of the previous five months. Unfortunately, the drug used would often react badly to children, sometimes erasing their entire memories, such as those of his new friend, Adriana. She also noted that the orphanage he was from hadn't noticed his absence. The night after that meeting, Jai and Adriana made one last escape attempt. However, they both decided to go back. Adriana had grown to like the program, and Jai remained because of her. The next day, the two were introduced to Mike120, who had attempted to escape by flying away with a pelican. The three would train together from there on out. On March 9th, 2525, the three underwent augmentations with the other 72 Spartan twos. They were among the 33 that survived without complications. Sometime after receiving their Mark IV Mjolnir armor and participating in the Battle of Kai Seti IV on November 27th, Jai, Adriana, and Mike were formally designated Grey Team. Together, they would operate behind enemy lines, wreaking havoc on Covenant and remaining insurrectionist targets. Jai operated as the team leader, Adriana as their infiltration specialist, and Mike, the technical expert. In 2535, the group was deployed to what remained of the 23 Libre system to destroy navigation data held by the survivors of the colony Madrigal. When Madrigal had been attacked by the Covenant, the colonists had been evacuated by local rebels and insurrectionists to an artificial habitat known as the Rubble, a series of asteroids strung together. The survivors had since started formally trading with Kegyar, which had the UNSC worried about the security of the nav data. Adriana 111 formed something of a working relationship with Rubble inhabitant Ignacio Delgado when she saved him from the once friendly Kegyar. Delgado was the only one who knew where the nav data was, and Adriana believed she could use him to gather information about the insurrectionists that mingled with the survivors in the rubble. The two encountered each other again in a bar when Adriana was trying to gather information on a freighter called the Kestrel. Delgado was also looking into the Kestrel, and when the two were overheard, they were attacked by five insurrectionists. Adriana neutralized them and took Delgado to Grey Team's freighter, the Petia. Grey Team revealed to Delgado their true mission before letting him leave. Soon after, they were contacted by the Rubble's AI, Juliana, who agreed to give the Spartans the nav data they sought in exchange for protecting the Rubble. Meanwhile, Delgado was, reluctantly, handing over the nav data to two members of the Rubble's Security Council, who claimed they were going to use it as part of Project Exodus, an effort to make a mobile habitat. As Delgado was about to hand the data over, one of the counselors, Peter Bonifacio, shot the other counselor and Delgado, taking the data and leaving them for dead. While the other counselor died, Delgado was thankfully saved by Grey Team. Delgado informed Grey Team of Bonifacio's plan to hand the data over to the Kegyar, the counselor hoping to broker peace with them. To stop Bonifacio, Grey Team split up. Adriana and Mike went after the counselor's freighter, the Kestrel, while Jai and Juliana set free the crew of the UNSC Midsummer Night. The Midsummer Night had tracked modified plasma rifles to the rubble. The rifles had been traded to the inhabitants of the rubble by the Kegyar under the orders of the Prophet of Truth, who in turn sold them to other insurrectionists. When the ship arrived, it was attacked and the surviving crew imprisoned. After freeing the crew, which included then-Lieutenant Jacob Keyes, Jai and the crew boarded Rath's ship, the Infinite Spoils. Meanwhile, Mike and Adriana had managed to disable Bonifacio's ship and board it. Bonifacio had hidden away in an escape pod but was quickly found. He said he'd tell the Spartans where the nav data was if they let him go, which they reluctantly agreed to. Bonifacio took his escape pod and tried to contact Reth for help, but Reth left the counselor to die when he discovered Bonifacio no longer had the nav data. On board the Infinite Spoils, Jai and the Midsummer Night crew eliminated Kegyar and raided the ship's computer systems. Jai himself had a brief run-in with the Sanghili Thalvadami. Vadami had been sent by the Prophet of Regret to find the source of the modified plasma rifles, Regret unaware of Truth's plan to use them to find other human colonies. 
The Spartan and Elite were fairly evenly matched, but Jai was forced to retreat before a winner could be decided. Afterwards, it was discovered that Reth had been breeding an Ungoy army on the nearby moon of Metaset as part of his plan to attack the rubble and take it over. Great Team was initially content to ignore this since their mission had been completed, but Lieutenant Keys managed to convince them to help. Jai and Adriana were deployed to Metaset with squads of ODSTs via HEV. Adriana's group took out AA defenses, while Jai's took out the Kigyar's sensors, allowing Juliana to use evacuated asteroids from the rubble to bombard the moon. Afterwards, the Spartans, ODSTs, and all other survivors were evacuated either on board the UNSC Midsummer Night or the Exodus asteroid. Following the mission, Grey Team were debriefed by their handler, Commander Hadley, and Admiral Preston Cole himself. The team had lost their freighter, the Petya, and requested a prowler for future missions. Hadley agreed to get them one and noted that they would soon be sent even further behind enemy lines, something Grey Team seemed excited about. Sometime in late 2551, Grey Team was sent on a mission against a Covenant facility in what was once human territory. By the time of Operation Red Flag in August of 2552, Grey Team had been out of contact for almost a year. This wasn't cause for concern, however, as it was standard operating procedure for Grey Team. However, Grey Team would remain out of contact for several more years. Now, in 2558, Grey Team has been found once again. As a war is brewing on the human and Sanghili occupied colony of Karo, the UEG has dispatched an envoy to broker peace. Unknown to most, however, this envoy has also been ordered by the Office of Naval Intelligence to find a way to free Grey Team, who have been held in stasis by a Sanghili shipmaster since the end of the war. What happened to Grey Team? How were they captured? And what will their fate be? Grey Team's story will be continued in Halo Envoy, releasing on Tuesday, April 25th. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.